Hi everyone, welcome to another NHD Quick Tip. This time we're going to focus on the question, how do you engage with professionals? So as you're working on your NHD project and doing your research, you might have questions that you need to reach out to someone who works at a museum or a librarian or an archivist. And so there's a proper procedure that goes along with that. And there's a, an etiquette that needs to be followed a lot of the time. So we're going to walk you through some quick tips and show you examples of how to engage with different museum, archivists, and librarians and other professionals as you're doing this. So, some important tips to consider when you're contacting professionals is you need to make your questions specific. Remember, archivists, librarians, and other professionals are working, and so they need specifics in order to help you with your research. Right? They're not doing your research for you, but they need specifics in order to direct you to what you need in their museums or archives. Avoid generic statements like, I need to know everything that there is about X, Y, and Z. Right? They can't really help you. They need to have more specific ideas of what you're looking for. Do your research before you contact anyone. This isn't the place where you start. You should have completed your research. You should know specifically what you're looking for in an archive or in a museum. Okay, This isn't your first stop. This is one of your last stops. Make sure that you're always respectful. Remember, these are professionals and they needed to be treated as such just as you would treat your teacher or anyone else in this setting. And of course, keep in mind, archivists and other professionals are not here to do your work for you. It's your job to create your own MHD project. There are also some questions to avoid when you reach out to professionals. One, avoid saying things like, can you send me everything you have on this topic? Remember, you're emailing archives and museums. They have a ton of primary sources out there. They can't send you everything. You need to do your research to see what they have in their archives or in their collections so that you can tell them what specifically you're looking for so that they can help you get access to it. Another thing to avoid is saying something like, please tell me everything you know about this topic. Remember, if your topic is something like women's suffrage, that's years worth of history. They don't have time to do that. And really your secondary sources should be doing that for you. This is really about getting additional information or answering follow-up questions that you have after reading your secondary sources, after looking at online exhibits, and after seeing what's already out there. Additionally, you want to avoid questions like, can you get me all of this information ASAP? Professionals that work in museums, libraries, and archives they have full-time jobs, so they may not be getting back to you as quickly as you'd hope for, right? Remember, it's your job to do your work, so don't rely on someone to get this information for you. Keeping in mind that most of us are going to reach out via email, all emails that you send to professionals should have a professional tone and carry a certain etiquette with them. So we're going to walk you through an email example of how you might reach out to a professional in order to engage with them about your NHD project. Here's an example of a professional email. So we'll start with the greeting. Dear, and if you know their title, like Dear Dr. Smith or Dear Mr. Smith or Mrs. Smith, so try to look for their title when you are looking for their email address. Then you're going to start by introducing yourself. My name is your name. A student at your school, where I am working on my National History Day topic. This year, my topic is on the 1897 Brussels International Exposition and how European powers use the exposition to support colonization of African countries like the Congo. So you'll notice there that I was very specific. I explained that I was doing a National History Day project, I gave my topic, and I was very specific. I didn't just say the 1897 Brussels International Exposition. I said how I was looking at that international exposition, and I was specifically looking at places like the Congo. Then I would go on to say, I noticed that in 2017, your museum featured a temporary exhibit on the topic. So by saying this, it means that I have done my research and I know that in 2017 that this museum did an exhibit on my topic. Have the materials used in this exhibit been digitized? If so, is it possible to review these materials for my project? So I'm asking very specific questions. I've looked at this exhibit and I'd like to know if the exhibit's been digitized and if so, I can look at them for my project. 
This will help the archivist or the librarian or the museum professional direct my question and answer it concisely and clearly. Additionally, I noted that in a 2017 newspaper article on the exhibit, you said that the 1897 exposition was not the only time that Belgium exploited Congolese men and women for the sake of public events. This again shows that I've done my research. I know that in 2017 there was a newspaper article written about this exhibit and that there were other examples of exploitation of the Congolese people. Like that's what my topic's on. So then I go on to ask, would you name the other instances of exploitation at public events as I would like to include them in my project? So this is a very clear question that they would be able to answer very clearly, concisely, and quickly for me as well. Then I conclude my email by saying, thank you for your time, sincerely, and then I sign my name. So now we've given you an example of how you might set up a professional email to reach out and engage with professionals, whether they be at museums, libraries, or archives. Remember, keep in mind all of the tips that we've given you and how to structure that email. And of course, the biggest tip we can give you, don't forget to always check with your teacher before you hit that send button. Your teacher should really review those emails that you're sending out and making sure that you've done everything that you can to make your questions as specific as possible and to engage with professionals in a respectful manner. Good luck on your NHD project.